This is Talk To Me. Your host, Joshua Toomey, bring you epic rants, anecdotes, and interviews with heavy hitters from hardcore A new life begins! to hair metal. What is this up, everybody? Is Welcome talk in to, to Talk me. To Me. This is episode 241. Coming at you live from my rental car here in San Francisco. Uh, sitting outside our Airbnb, 5 a.m., Thursday morning, September 13th. Hanging out. Just got off the uh, Skype with Gene Hoagland. He was over in Germany, so it was like 2 p.m. for him, 5 a.m. for me. All the things I do for you guys to get these episodes out. Gene's always a great guest. Gene is the first of the Five Timers Club. I thought Max had got him, like I tell him in the interview. But uh, but yeah, I think Gene is now the first of the Five Timers Club. I'll have to get a jacket put together for him. Send it out to him. Maybe if I see him on this upcoming uh, U.S. tour, I'll bring out a jacket and we'll do an actual full-on Five Timers presentation. They've got a new album coming out April 3rd on Nuclear Blast. It's called Titans of Creation. Obviously, anything with the word Titans in it, I'm probably going to enjoy it. Because <laughs> you guys know my love for my uh, my hometown football team. We'll see what they do in the off season. But yeah, the Testament album, Titans of Creation, everyone's had a chance to listen to Night of the Witch, which I call Night of the Watch in the interview, and uh, Gene quickly corrects me. I do have a tendency to uh, mess up names with Gene. I don't know why. I've put him in Death Angel so many times when you guys know he was in Dark Angel. Other than that, real quick, make sure to get a Talk To Me t-shirt. Reach out to me, paypal.me slash talk to me. $25 free shipping in the continental United States. If you are outside of the United States, I will uh, I will hook you up. We'll get you a shirt, and you can wear it loudly and proudly wherever you are in this wonderful, wonderful world. And then also head over to our friends at MerchLive.com. Shop till you drop. Use the promo code TOOMY10 at checkout. Yes, that is TOOMY10 at checkout, T-O-O-M-E-Y-1-0. At checkout for 10% off your entire order of Slayer, Pantera, Five Finger Death Punch, Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax, so much more good stuff. Make sure to go check out all of their t-shirts, hoodies. Use the promo code to me 10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Now let's check out a classic off of Brotherhood of the Snake. Talk to Gene Hoagland. Check out the new song, Night of the Witch. And then I will talk to you guys momentarily. Well, all right, guys, we have the return of Gene Hoagland. And, uh, Gene, I think you're the first of the Five Timers Club on the uh, Talk To Me podcast. Holy moly, it's like the hosting us and now? That's right. Like, that. like <laughs> Steve Martin or somebody. I think That's you get a fun. jacket now. Ooh, where's my jacket? Come on, where is it? Well, I will, uh, it's in the mail. <laughs> no, awesome. Yeah, I, cool. I, I had to look at it last night. I thought Max Cavalera might have beat you, but uh, he has one more to go. So you, you're you're the uh, first of the five timers club. All right, I'm racing ahead of you, Max. I <laughs> dare you to catch up. Absolutely, man. Well, uh, it, it this is one of the most bizarre interviews I've done. It is uh, two p.m. where you are, and I am sitting. Yes. I am sitting in my rental car in San Francisco at five a.m. So. 5 a.m. Holy moly! God, I thought you were. I, I didn't know you were going to be 5 a.m. I could have. Well, I didn't either. Working around you. <laughs> I uh, I I didn't do the uh, proper time math. So uh, so I was like, uh, well, okay. So once I agreed to it, I was like, well, you agreed to it, so you got to do it. But I mean, my body is still on East Coast time, so I woke up like oh. an hour ago, just kind of like ready to go. So fair enough. So yeah, well, I'm sitting in San Francisco. Too right far now. out of your schedule. Yeah. Very cool, man. So speaking of San Francisco, we'll start there with the uh, the Battle of the Bay tour. Um, <coughs> Indeed. You, you know, the uh, how is that going? Obviously, you guys had some trouble there on the ferry. Um, outside of that, how's it going? Oh, the tour's going great. Everybody's in super great spirits. And, you know, we've all been friends for 30-something years now. So 
And this is the first time this tour has ever happened. I thought we had done it before, but we've toured with each band, Exodus and Death Angel, but separately. I thought we'd all combined them all up like five years ago. And we indeed had that crazy fairy ride of doom the other day. That's, I've, I've never been on something that intense. Yeah, man, kind of kind of walk me it, through that a little bit. I mean, I read I read what Gary Holt put out, but I mean, uh, you, you know, that was just more of uh, almost like a statement. I mean, I mean, kind of like what happened there. Well, we just <clears throat> we ran into some very rough seas. Apparently, we ran right into the middle of an enormous storm. Apparently, they they rate their storms in categories up to twelve, and we were in an eleven. Oh wow! And a lot of people were tripping, like, how did they even let your boat leave? You know, leave the dock, you know, because our um, one thing I'd like to clarify is we didn't lose the equipment truck. It just it was on a separate ferry that it was on a cargo ferry and they didn't let that one leave oh, okay. the dock. So I, I said somebody was mentioned. Yeah, I read somebody thought that the, the truck blew over the side or something. It's like, no, 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 no. But. I personally was never terrified for my life. I was kind of laughing through all of it, but I will admit I've never been through something that intense. It felt like the worst turbulence you've ever been on, on a plane. And then that plane had harsh landings, about 40 of them. Cause the front of the boat was lifting out of the water. Stevie D was telling me, yeah, I was watching it on, on my TV on, on these ferries and, and like the 70,000 tons cruises, they give you a camera, uh, channel, you know, camera of all the boats. I mean, a, a, a shot of all the cameras on the boat. And he had had the the front facing camera on his TV, and he's like, "Yeah, you would watch the camera, you'd watch the TV, and and all of a sudden the the horizon would leave, and the the camera's raising, and you're seeing sky, <laughs> wow. and then slam, and it did that about forty times, and trying to even my. In my cabin on the ferry was, you know, my, my, my bathroom was right next to my bed. You know, they're pretty, they're not the largest cabins. And trying to get from my bed to the bathroom takes one step. And trying to get back to the bed takes one step. And I could barely do any of that. You know, it was like I actually got levitated many times and I flew through the air one time when I was just. I'm, 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 up, I'm up on one leg, just merely trying to drop into my bed. That's all you got to do. Just lift a leg, drop into your bed. And it wasn't letting me do that. And then all of a sudden, boat would shift the other way. And I'd go flying in. You know, fortunately, I was caught by the bed. So that's the best way to go flying through a room is when you get caught by a bed. But <laughs> that, that's how that was working. It was it was super intense. But you, you just kind of had to laugh through it. You know, I I I never felt fearful for my life or anything. I, I'd never really get that way anyway. I get right. pretty calm in death situations. You know, if death is an option here, you better calm down and work yourself out, Gene. But that that was all good. And so we got through it. And unfortunately, our gear didn't make it. But Exodus and Death Angel were, were very kind enough to let us borrow their gear. And we made the show happen. And the best part of the show was, was our – backdrops you know we've got a bunch of backdrops on this tour testament does and those didn't make it as well so we hung up a t-shirt <laughs> that was our backdrop we just hung up a soul t-shirt up there and that was really fun the crowd really enjoyed that outside of that has there been uh have you had anything have you ever been in a bus accident or uh, uh yeah i've been in all of that been in you know bus rv accidents where you know, guys, guys were injured and, you know, that happened in, in, in the dark angel days, quite, quite a few years ago, back, you know, in, in 1989, we, we, we got rear ended by ourselves. Our, our RV, the dark angel was traveling in, got rear ended by our equipment truck. You know, it was just crazy traffic. We were on the cross Bronx expressway and, and, and all of a sudden, bam, and, Guys went flying, and I remember I was, you know, that's we were sleeping on the RV at the time. It was relatively early, and, and I just remember hearing the bang, seeing the TV go flying, and I just grabbed onto the guy that was sleeping next to me, which happened to be Ron, so I had to grab him by his big butt and keep him from flying, and, <laughs> and that, was, that was crazy. And then, you know, a few years ago, 
you know, we had, uh, when we were out with Fear Factory, our bus burned to the ground with us on it. Oh, God. Um, that was crazy. Um, that made national news in England because the bus melted itself to the side of the road. <laughs> and that became national news. <laughs> so There's no such thing as a bad so press, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess so. But I do remember, you know, I mean, this has been long enough now. Yeah, yeah. The bus company came to us and said, guys, please don't speak to the press. And I was like, why? You know, turned out there was some really shady shit going on with that uh, bus company okay. where this was not the first or only time this exact thing had happened to them. So fuck that bus company and <laughs> fuck anybody that ever worked with that bus company and fuck anybody who returned to that bus company so which is what one of the bands did so right. screw that yeah that's a mess man that's absolutely crazy um so the the new album uh last time you were on you told me that it was done and uh, now it's about to come out and everybody's had a taste of a uh, of night of the watch and then um Night of the Watch. I love it. Night of the Witch. Man, I you know, what is it about talking to Night you of- that I just get names wrong? <laughs> I, 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 I put you, <laughs> I've put you in Death Angel like 15 times. Uh, but uh, yeah, Night oh, of well, the that's, Witch. Oh, that's a pretty common occurrence. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, Night of the Witch. Everybody's loving Night of the Witch, man. So uh, tell me a little bit about, I guess a little bit more about the new album. And, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, maybe your take on what you did on it. Well, I, I would say that, you know, like, like I have been saying before anybody's heard the record, I'm like, I, I have a pretty damn good feeling Testament fans are really going to dig this record. I think it's a killer Testament record, and, and it goes off on a couple of different kind of journeys for Testament as of, as of their last three or four records. Um, but it sounds great. It's, it's, relatively melodic from from a chuck billy kind of standpoint but none of it is is you know it's it that's not silly melodic it's not radio melodic it's just you know chuck obviously he's got one of the most finely tuned voices in the in the genre he can do a lot with it and he decided to push himself on this vocally and and it, it came out great and i i i this is my opinion i think this is andy sneep's absolute best mix he's ever done wow. so you know it, it all sounds good there and for those who have heard night of the witch that uh you know that's that's a, that's essentially how the album is going to sound you know sonically that's a good representation of 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 the music on the record you know the sonic portions of it and um each song sounds a little bit different than the other ones and and it's all really good you know i will admit some of the you know, it might not be as immediate thrash as, like, say, Brotherhood of the Snake. Some of the songs on Brotherhood of the Snake that I thought were really strong that kind of got buried towards the end of the record. Those are, you know, we, we don't have a lot like that, but there's still plenty of thrash on here. Plenty of killer riffs. Eric did a great job writing riffs, and everybody's playing really well on this record and it came about pretty smoothly i'm sure people are aware of all the all the monstrous nonsense that was happening around brotherhood of the snake and <laughs> we didn't have any of that this time it's relatively smooth smooth production all the way around so it was it was a good time and you know i i imagine testament fans are really going to dig this record like i've been saying you know you're talking about chuck billy's distinctive voice and how good it is and it's kind of cool to see him kind of the younger newer bands and i know that lamb of god and kill switch engage aren't young and new but i mean they are the younger breed i guess and it's kind of cool to see those guys having him come do their albums oh very cool i was unaware that's uh, that's cool is he singing on a kill switch and singing on some lamb of god yeah Kick ass. Yeah, Way to yeah, go yeah he was on the uh, latest kill switch engage album and then on the uh and uh, i guess it's reported that he's on the new uh the new lamb of god coming out soon sweet that's well, awesome well, kick ass <laughs> well breaking news to uh to gene hoagland yeah <laughs> hey man I, I i i used to read my schedule off blabbermouth <laughs> you know that right. shows you how in the dark I, I am most of the time yeah it's always nice when you're like oh i guess well i guess i'm going on tour because blabbermouth just yeah, posted I did. it <laughs> yeah, it used to be like that you know now i try to be a little more on it than that but uh, god for years i was like okay that's i see when we're hitting the road all right good to know 
<clears throat> well, I do want to kind of take a little somber turn because obviously 2020 has been kind of the year of the uh, drummer passing. Um, Absolutely. Uh, some monsters have uh, passed away in the last few months. Um, I, let's start with Sean Reinhardt because I'm obviously you're probably the most connected to that one. Um, obviously with your de- connections and death. And, uh, sure. you, know, I, you know, it's funny as I was thinking about this, uh, getting ready for this was my first ever concert was, uh, Cannibal Corpse and Cynic when I was like 14 or 15. And, uh, looking back, I, obviously my, uh, my teenage brain didn't understand what I was seeing, but, um, uh, man, Sean was an amazing drummer. And, uh, what are your thoughts on Sean? Well, he absolutely was, you know, a, a genre changing, very inspiring drummer absolutely you know human i've i've said it many times and i will always say this that you know sean's drums on human helped helped change the game absolutely you know just the fact that you know you if you have a talent that goes beyond the genre that you're playing for and you're allowed to utilize that talent and that expertise you know, Sean did an amazing job at just that with Human. And as as a whole, that album was just ball-crushingly heavy, totally amazing. Oh, I could see Stevie D walking outside the bus, speak of the devil. And, <laughs> um, you know, that was, he was, you know, Sean's, Sean's impact on our style of music, you know, it was felt immediately by myself a a couple of years later when I was going to work with death, you know, just having, having Sean has, as having Sean setting the template that he did just opened up all the avenues for, for the, the, the approach of the instrument on 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 individual thought patterns for Mm -hmm. me and and also symbolic you know so just having sean there and and chuck as well being like yeah dude i'm 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 down for whatever you want to write you know however you want to play your drums go for it go sick go nuts i've always quoted chuck as that and that's a direct quote go sick go nuts and you know having having human under death's belt made albums like individual and symbolic and sounds of perseverance be that much easier to accept as from the audience and and create from this from the band standpoint so you know Sean is a, a, a mighty talent who will of course always be missed and you know having his his musical legacy live on through the music is something we're all we are all fortunate for um you know all of our hearts go out to his family his 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 husband you know and everybody who was involved in his life and you know it it is a it is a tragedy for all of us you know absolutely unexpected you know and you know, we, we, we still don't know exactly what happened and we're all, you know, kind of waiting with bated breath when we get the word of what exactly happened. But, um, you know, we, we miss Sean and, and we love Sean and, and our hearts go out to his, his family and loved ones and, and we hope they're, you know, going to make it, make it through everything. Oh, okay. Absolutely, man. That's, uh, you couldn't say it better. Um, with, with Neil Peart dying, um, Obviously, he was battling, you know, uh, silently battling for a long time. But, uh, you know, we're, obviously, I'm, I'm going to just assume you were a Rush guy and a Neil Peart guy. He was my first, you know, well, perhaps my second. But, you know, after after Peter Chris, you know, I I started with the baby steps and then I jumped right into <laughs> advanced th- running the mar- <laughs> he, he, Absolutely. Yeah. That, that Neil Peart was and Neil was a gigantic influence on me. And, and it, you know, so, so much so that I just kind of didn't have any words. You know, I, I don't make a lot of postings on passings of people like for instance the day before neil was announced that was the second anniversary of my dad's passing and that also kind of influenced and you know last year i did make a post hey one year anniversary of my dad croaking and (laughs) croaking would be a term my dad would use so my dad was pretty lighthearted about all of it um 
you know, so I didn't, I didn't make a second anniversary post on my dad. And then Neil came out and, and with, with, you know, with that, you know, pile of, of tragic news, you know, um, so I, I, I just, I just kind of turned kind of private, you know, and then the Sean passing and then my friend Reed yeah, as that's well. Where I was going next, yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know all the guys that passed. I, I, I just didn't really know what to say. And Neil Peart, uh, you know, like we all know he was retired, and we all know that his wishes were to, you know, not continue touring and 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 stuff like that. But you, you, we always held out hope. You know, like, hey, maybe something will change. You know, none of us were aware of what he was going through. You know, I'm not an insider in that world at all. And and those people who I am close with who are insiders, they were very, you know, they they, they were very tight-lipped about Neil's condition. You know, like some of my guys, you know, my, my guy at my symbol company, um, Chris Stanky, he's he's one of my best pals in the industry, and he's Neil's. He was one of Neil's best pals, and even Chris never mentioned anything. So if that was Neil's wishes to keep it quiet, yeah, they, it it was obviously kept quiet, you know. And, and you know, just the tragedy of his passing, knowing that even though we're holding out hope for, Hey, you never know a couple of years, maybe there'll be some, some kind of music coming from Neil, you know, maybe it won't be rush, but at least the man will be able to, you know, have his own options of what he would like to do with his future. You know, that is now gone. You know, I don't know if there's anything in the can, but obviously uh, a, a, a man such as Neil Peart, a, 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 a talent, the the legacy that he leaves behind through his music i mean we have all enjoyed rush you know i will freely admit i was the biggest rush fan up to a point you know up to a point in time when i i after a certain amount of time of rush i just kind of ventured off into other musics but i mean their early period that was massive monstrous gigantic influence on me you know and and neil also being a lyricist you know that that had, i'm a drummer lyricist so you know that that had some definite influence but yeah he was he was my favorite when i was when i was a teenager absolutely and you know i wouldn't be the drummer that i am without without a whole lot of neil peart involved in in my upbringing and you know i i'd, I'd love showing people on you know, like if I could sit down with people and point out the licks that I'm stealing throughout albums, <laughs> right. you know, just plenty of Neil represented in all that. And, you know, again, our hearts and, and, and well wishes go out to his family as well and all of his loved ones. And we hope that, that you know, everybody's going to make it through their journeys okay as, as well. Were you ever able to meet Neil? I never did. Nope. I've, I've met his tech and his tech was very nice. Um, and my, my, my drum tech, Jeff is buddies with his tech. Oh, nice. So, and, and as a matter of fact, I see Jeff walking out to, outside the bus right now too. There's Jeff. So it's that funny. It's like whoever I'm talking about right, right at the time, they're having to wander outside the bus. You so there you talking go. About but, um, or something. Yeah, really got totally. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's it's been a rough year. Then obviously with Reed Mullen, I know he was battling some demons and uh, and things like that. So just uh, j of of the you know obviously Sean and Neil of of the technical prowess, but I mean you know Reed just had a just an amazing pocket and uh, just some of Absolutely. the best grooves I've ever heard. So uh, you know obviously you said he was a friend. So I mean, what was your relationship with Reed Mullen? Uh, you know, like just yeah, God, I played my fourth show ever with, with with dark angel um with with coc it was uh uh savage grace dark angel possessed corrosion go figure what a bill <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know that was pretty amazing hi there i'm just talking about you <laughs> um thank you uh, you know read yeah you know, and we just became friends from the get-go you know that animosity record was 
was over the top amazing mm-hmm. you know we, we had all heard the eye for an eye and that was all really killer and then animosity was you know uh, the term crossover was developed for albums like animosity and then dri's dealing with it and then you know later on the chromags and you know with age of coral and stuff but you know coc leading the charge of of the punk metal collaborative effort of styles you know and reed was was amazing at 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 his at his work and plus he was just a really nice guy sean a really nice guy i knew them both well and you know just we'll we'll miss both of them and and i will say it for reed too we hope his families and and his family and all his loved ones are doing all right and you know that that one is tragic you know they're 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 all tragic in their own ways and especially when you could have done something about it Mm -hmm. you know like i we've all heard about reed's demons and things like that but uh you know sometimes they they get you in their grip and you don't get out of it and you know reed is an unfortunate testament to that sort of situation happening so but you know again reed is another guy who has a killer musical legacy and he will be missed absolutely and and you know we just hope all our brothers and corrosion are doing all right and you know, we hope everybody's going to pull through this one. Absolutely. Well, absolutely, man. Well, uh, let's let's dive into something a little bit more more, uh, more fun, I guess, and, and not talk about death. Oh, God. Thank God. <laughs> but, uh, but let's dive into, uh, you know, I saw that you did a recent um, uh, Death Clock show. And uh, how was it kind of getting, oh, back, right. into, getting back into the, uh, the cartoon world, becoming a cartoon drummer oh. again? Oh, well, that's some of my favorite drumming I get to do. So that was super fun. And it it's... It is so much fun working on Death Clock with Death Clock and, you know, all the the month leading up to the show where you're getting your chops together because you got to have your chops together to be playing with Death Clock and, and, you know, being a part of the construction of the show, you know, Brendan and myself putting a set list together and then us getting together with Felipe Salazar from, from Titmouse to put the the you know the show itself together the animation that that that's there we had some brand new animation for this you know they gave us a little bit of budget for the show so that was pretty cool getting getting to play a couple of songs that the band has has never done live and getting some cool animation to that as well that was really cool and it was just super exciting and and on on a a a personal fun awesome note uh, brendan had asked my wife laura christine if she'd jam a couple of songs too and that was really killer you know getting getting her take on the stuff and and adding that third guitar in there was pretty massive you know and um you know brendan even had brian beller who couldn't make the show you know beller was on tour with i believe the Aristoc- aristocrats and mike Keneally also couldn't make the show he was out with with Devin. At, at the time um you know so we had our we had our go-to base guy that we use when beller isn't available because that it's not the first time this has happened where we haven't had beller and you know we had pete griffin pete's great he's awesome he's a great dude and he's great player and he's been with a bunch of people and you could check out pete griffin online and you'll see what what his skills are and we also had Neely Brosh, who replaced Mike Keneally, and Neely did a great job and all that. And, you know, I'm very proud of Lara. She did a killer job. So, so you know, and Brandon did great. And it was just, it's always fun. Death Clock is amazing. And, and you know, I'm, I'm all for all Death Clock. You know, whatever the future might entail, I'm down for it all. Let's do it all. Absolutely. And... <laughs> I couldn't tell you what the future is, but, you know, that, that's more of a Brendan question. But if there is something ever in the works, then we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm always up for it, totally. <clears throat> Let's kind of start ending this on, uh, on some stuff here, man. This is my, I guess, my second time in San Francisco. I played here many years ago at, I think, a club called The Pound. If I if I remember oh, correctly, yeah, we do the pound, yeah, yeah. Bob, God, <laughs> Exodus guys used to work on that place. Nice, yeah. It was it was kind of cool. I'm, I got to got to play here with uh, Skin Lab opening for us, so that was always kind of cool. Good dudes in Skin Lab. Kick, 
Kick but, ass. But uh, but yeah. So this is the first time. I mean, obviously, you know, you've been on tour many, many times. You you, you might have been to a city, but you've never seen the city. Um, so we're kind of doing that yeah, now with, with San Francisco. And uh, we got here yesterday. We did Alcatraz. We did uh, Tommy's Joint. Uh, so, so oh, yeah. tonight we're Excellent. going to the uh, Warfield for the Mr. Bungle show with Possessed. Oh, kick uh, ass. Possessed is opening. Um, so, I mean, what are you... What... Are you kidding me? <laughs> Holy moly, I had no idea. I know about the Bungle show, but fuck, that's awesome. Possessed is opening. Jesus. Yeah, it's going to be pretty crazy. What man. a Killer bill. Night. That's awesome. So what's uh, the... Um, I guess what was your first time coming up here? Was it with Slayer? Let me see. God, it might have been. Yeah, because I wasn't even driving yet then. So, yeah, that would have been the first time. And and you know, we played Berkeley, and 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 we had done we had done Ruthie's Inn over in Berkeley, and and then when 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 I started driving, I used to go up there, and, and I was going up there for shows a lot. So it might not have been Slayer. Might not have been the first time, but I know that. You know, we were just having small packs of us driving up there to see shows because Mm -hmm. they had great shows, you know, (laughs) like you're stuck with like all the Molly Crew wannabes that are coming up in the scene. But then you got, you know, you got Exodus and Megadeth playing up in the in the Bay Area. Fuck, let's go to that, you know, quick six, six hour drive. We'll do that. But I returned many times just on my own, like driving ourselves up, me and my Dark Angel crew just driving up and seeing the show and then sleeping in a parking lot and driving home the next day sort of thing in the back of my truck. We, uh, after Alcatraz, we were going back to the Airbnb and it was like a, about a 30 minute through town drive. And I was like, these Hills have got to go. Like this is the, some of the, yeah, worst. No doubt. Was, uh, I was like, I, I felt like I was on a roller coaster. I was just like, every time I get to the top of a Hill, I'm just expecting to get to go straight down. I, I am not, yeah. I'm not, uh, enjoying these Hills at all. Oh man! Well, at least you're not driving a. You're probably not driving a stick shift. No, I, I was actually a, thinking about that. I was like, "Good God, brakes and a stick shift have just got to be a mess in this town." Oh yeah, God, I yeah, I I I, I taught myself my my stick shift chops when I was a teenager driving <laughs> around the Bay Area. You know, Oof. like holy shit! Yeah, you figure that out pretty quick when you're when you're there. Totally. I couldn't even imagine that. I I drove a stick as when like my my first few cars were sticks, and yeah, you get on a hill, and even in a, a even in Tennessee, you know, you're not these inclines are insane here, not not as bad as there. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> oh Amazing. man, well, uh, what's a, what's another uh, landmark I need to go see on my uh, my my trip to San Francisco? Well, you might try stopping in at Escape from New York. Pizza, which is in Haight Ashbury, and it's kind of up at the top edge of Haight by that uh, by what, Golden Gate Park. And um, you should try their pesto pizza. That's okay. pretty damn good, you know. Like it's just get the one with just pesto, not the pe- pesto and the potatoes. That's good too. But just try the pesto slice. That's that's well worth it. That's pretty darn good. And you know, Haight Ashbury, if you're you know they they may still have some cool record stores. You know, uh, like Amoeba was there they have an amoeba there yeah, brian uh brian worth... hussein and scott ian are doing an in-store there today okay makes sense well there you go so so that's pretty good and good. um you know you can try getting if you're going to the war field this is not far from the war field um you could go up to twin peaks which is a pretty neat view of the city, and if you were up at the top, I think of that's. Twin Peaks I, I, there, I think that's where our Airbnb is because I saw some Twin Peaks. Uh, yeah, we. I, I think I drove through Twin signage. Peaks last night. Yeah, I think that's why I'm so t- like well, that, so jaded on my hills. Fair enough. Yeah. Hey, there you go. And and you you can't miss Twin Peaks because it's that you know the Twin Towers mm-hmm. up there, the tower that giant enormous tower and you could drive your car right next to that tower and you know overlook the city and that's a pretty pretty awe inspiring view that's pretty good and and you'd actually probably recognize a whole lot of tv car commercials if you were at the top of there you'd be like oh god they totally filmed that you know this car commercial here right. this car commercial there so because <laughs> it's got that nice little winding road that's pretty pretty visible from the top and and all that stuff but that's that's pretty good and and Jesus, you know, you can 
yeah, I don't know if you get the chance to go over to over the bridge to Oakland or anything, but there's a lot of fun stuff over there. And, you know, Japantown is really nice, you know, head over to the Fillmore or whatever. And Warfield, make sure where you park your car. That could be a little rugged neighborhood a little bit later in the evening. But, you know, yeah, park yourself a- in a lot there you'll be okay <laughs> yeah that's the one thing i've heard about the warfield in the area over there just uh they, they keep your head on a swivel i guess right yeah a little bit but you'll be okay it, yeah. it's it's not bad you know just it's 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 you'll be okay you know it's just they they like to scare you you know <laughs> nice 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 man well uh i will let you uh enjoy hamburg germany uh looks like you right on. you had a little day off yesterday and then uh the show tonight what it looks like that's then, right then uh, you guys come back in the states. Going to do a nice tour with uh, Black Dahlia Murder and Municipal Waste. That's got to be a lot of fun. And uh, that's just, right. Is, is the, so assuming just the rest of the year is all testament for you. Anything else going on? Oh yeah, we got tons. Like you know, we got some Death to All coming up over summertime, and we're we're reintroducing ourselves to the European audience anyway. Um, we are doing three festivals and a couple of, you know, warm up club shows. And the festivals are Hellfest, Grass Pop, and Copenhagen. Um, Hellfest in France, Grass Pop in Belgium, Copenhagen in Copenhagen, Denmark. And, you know, those are three, three mighty, mighty festivals. You know, Hellfest is gargantuan, and so is Grass Pop, and Copenhagen is, that's no slouch either. So, that that'll be really cool really looking forward to that and um i know there's going to be some dark angel stuff happening you know we got to finish we got to get that record worked on so i'm i'm going to dedicate some of this year to that as well and there's you know one thing i'm excited about and we're in the process of of throwing tunes back and forth or whatever is is i'm working with a man named bear mccreary and we haven't officially, you know, signed our deal yet together to work, but I'm, I'm so excited about this project. He's been sending me demos of his stuff. And Bear is the soundtrack artist for many a movie, many a TV show. Um, we worked on the Godzilla King of the Monsters oh, nice. movie together. He did the entire, you know, musical score arrangement for, for, for that movie. And, um, we also did a cover of BOC's Godzilla. Yeah, yeah, and that was great. That was really fun. That was my myself and Brendan Small and and Brian Beller from Death Clock. So you had kind of the the backing band of Death Clock, <laughs> and you had Serge Tankian on yes. on vocals. And Bear's material is super exciting. God, it's 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 just amazing. So I'm I'm really excited to do that i know that's going to happen later later in the year but that's part of what's going to happen this year and there's going to be a crap load of testament touring no doubt and and all of that so it's it's going to be a a pretty well stocked year absolutely so yeah titans of creation out uh april 3rd nuclear blast and i i keep saying it man but the last you know the last two or three testament albums you know this one included uh, you know, Testament has just completely hit a stride. I think that maybe the, like the rec- recording technology and, and the riffs of Eric kind of just met up at, at a perfect time. And having a band to play this stuff as, as talented as they do is, is no slouch either, yeah. you know? I mean, you, you included. Got, yeah, you got, you know, myself and Stevie D, like we're, we're brothers for 30 something years and we play really well together and Alex does always does a great job on his leads and eric's rips and you know i i will admit that you know i i made myself a part of the whole writing process this time we didn't really have that that situation happen with brotherhood of the snake but this time i for myself anyway i took the bull by the balls and said look be there (laughs) from day one of writing so at least you have a really good grasp on everything so that's why this album sounds it's going to sound really really well rehearsed really well you know it just everything sits together really well it's it's the arrangements you know you could tell there was a lot of love put into this record so so there you go and like i say we just you know i'm sure everybody just wants you know testament fans to enjoy it and i'm sure they're gonna you know it's, it's it's a good record so 
So there you go. Absolutely. Well, very cool, man. Anything else going on that you need to get out there? I know you're one of the busiest men in metal. Yeah, lots of touring. I hope to see everybody on the road. You know, we'll we'll be coming through on the on that spring run. So grab your tickets because those are going fast too. Absolutely. And I'm sure I'll come out, and we'll have to do. A, you'll you'll be the first uh, six timer club, right? I'll beat them all. <laughs> we could just start keep our own every, podcast, everybody's. Right? There you go. Everybody's going to eat my dust. Try to catch up to Hoagland here. <laughs> well, good, man. Well, enjoy uh, Europe. Be safe. Uh, hopefully no more crazy ferry rides, all that good stuff. And, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm going to go Appreciate it, to Josh. <laughs> oh, good look. Yeah, good job. Just don't be driving while you're doing it. Uh, absolutely, man. Well, take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care, Josh. Thank you very much. We'll see you. Uh-huh.
Hey all, here's Andreas Kisser from Sepultura, and you're listening to Talk To Me. Enjoy! Right, huge thank you to Gene Hoagland for taking the time. I'm here in San Francisco, going to go see Mr. Bungle tonight. On the next episode of the Talk To Me podcast, I will recap my trip to San Francisco, the show, and hopefully have a cool interview for you guys next week that I will be doing on Friday here in the Bay Area. So until next Thursday for the Talk To Me podcast, I am Joshua Toomey, and I will talk to you guys soon.